So yeah, let's talk about what IVS actually is. So first we're going to talk about what is secondary radiation. Then we're going to explain how do we model it currently without IVS. Then we're going to discuss what is new with IVS, so what's the difference. And we'll look at simulation results, model outputs, with and without IVS, and we compare them to see what differences it makes. So what is secondary radiation? So we start off by explaining what is primary radiation. Primary radiation is basically this, what you as a user input into the model. So this could be long wave radiation and this can be short wave radiation. You can either enter it um, just by the location and by the cloud cover and NVMet will calculate it from itself. Or you can also provide NVMet with boundary conditions for these parameters, uh, for example, with a full forcing. This would be the short wave direct radiation. This would be the diffuse radiation. And in dark red would be the long wave radiation provided. So this is the primary radiation. How is secondary radiation created in the model? So what is now secondary radiation? Secondary radiation is either reflected short wave radiation. Imagine short wave radiation coming down and then being reflected on objects. This can be buildings, it can be vegetation, and of course it can also be surfaces. So the second part of the arrows here this is reflected short wave radiation, and this is one part of the secondary radiation. Another would be long wave radiation emitted from objects. So all the objects in the model area, they have a certain kind of temperature, and depending on the temperature and their emissivity, they emit long wave radiation. This can be buildings, this can be, again, surfaces, and of course it can be vegetation. So this is what we understand by secondary radiation, short wave reflected radiation, and long wave radiation emitted from objects. So how do we model it? Um, one way to model it would be the average view factors. The abbreviation would be AVF, yeah? the AVF approach. This is the approach that we're using when IVS is not used. And it is working with, like the name says, with view factors. And the average part we're going to talk about in a second. And you know, most of you more probably have seen when it's been calculated. So when a simulation starts and the model area has been gridded, you see that the view factors are being calculated. And this is basically the part where these average view factors are prepared to be used. So uh, what they basically do is something like these images, a fish lens, so they, they look, okay, which parts of, for example, the sky do I see? Which parts that I have are covered with buildings or vegetation? And they are not doing this just for one hemisphere, for the upper hemisphere, like you see in these pictures, but they also do it for the lower hemisphere. And for example, um, you can also um, show them in NVMAT. So in another model output would be the sky view factor, upwards view, and then you see, okay, how much sky am I seeing? So for example, this cell underneath a tree here, yeah, it doesn't see so much sky, but a, sky, but a cell here in the open field, it sees a lot of sky. So this is a, a dimensionless factor from zero to one. But we're not just calculating the sky view factor, that is probably well known or, um, in any way, but we also calculate other view factors, and that would be, for example, for the vegetation. So underneath the tree, when you're looking upwards, you obviously see lots of vegetation. Um, then the building view factor, so when you're close to a building, and these are quite high buildings, then you'll see lots of building, and soil, that would be a downward view now. Yeah. So uh, when you look underneath yourself, you would see when you're above grass, for example, you see lots of vegetation and in the middle of a, a road, you don't see much vegetation. Yeah. So what do we do with these? We can calculate a total view factor for every cell. So for example, let's take this cell, it's in the open space here. It sees it's for both hemispheres, for upwards view and downwards views combined. So it sees 0.4, so 40% it sees a sky. 0.1, it's far um, from, from buildings. 0.1, so 10% would be um, the view factor for buildings. 20% would be the view factor for vegetation. And 30% would be the view factor for soil. And with these view factors, they, are, they add up to one, obviously, we can calculate the long wave radiation and also the short wave reflected radiation this cell is receiving. Let's take the long wave radiation as an example, but it's exactly applicable to the short wave reflected radiation. 
So what we do is the incoming long wave radiation for this cell is comprised out of the long wave radiation from the sky, this is the user defined boundary condition, times the view factor for the sky. And now comes the interesting part. So how much is how much long wave radiation is this cell receiving from buildings? Well, since we only know that it is seeing buildings, but not which building and not with part of a building, we don't store this in the average view factor, this is the average part now, we calculate the average of the long wave radiation emitted from every building and multiply that with a view factor for the building for that cell. Yeah, you see that now we get a value for this, yeah, but it is obviously not exactly the parts of the building this cell might be seeing. Yeah? This cell might be seeing parts of this building, this building, but certainly not of this facades here. But we have to use the average factor because um, we only have the information that it sees 10% buildings, not which building. We don't store which building is, is, is seen by this cell in the average view factor approach. And the same goes for the vegetation as soil likewise. So we don't have any information about the soil type that is exactly underneath which of which the, the cell is most likely seeing most. Yeah? but the average of the long wave radiation of all the surfaces of the long wave radiation times the view factor of the soil. So this would be the approach of the average view factor. So this is basically the default setting when IVS is not used. Yeah? So you ba basically can guess it. So what is new with the IVS? Well, IVS is an acronym, like I said before, indexed view sphere. And this new approach is somewhat different than the average view factor approach. So every cell now shoots a ray that is for, for an angle that is user defined and looks, okay, what do I see in this direction? Yeah. And then it basically um, creates these facets. And for every these, for all these facets that it has, it stores not only which ob object type am I seeing? Am I seeing a tree? Am I seeing a building? Am I seeing parts of the sky, parts of soil? but it stores which building am I seeing exactly, yeah? which part of a vegetation of a tree, for example, am I seeing, which part of the um, soil am I seeing. All these different information are now stored for every cell. And you can clearly see that this is a much more accurate approach. But also, when you have lots and lots of facets, yeah, and you have all these facets for every cell. So every cell is looking in all these directions and storing what am I seeing in this, for this uh, view here, for this view facet. So memory is needed. If you have very fine granulate of these uh, high resolution of all these facets. So these are user defined and we're gonna have a look, uh, look into the software where we can say, okay, how many of those will I, do I want to have? Because if, I, if you have a high resolution, for example, you could have 400 facets per cell and you would have 300 by 300 by 30 cells. So this amounts, of course, to lots and lots of cells. So uh, a better approach would be, okay, to, to limit the amount of cells um, only to to still have the benefits of IVS that you have information about which cells am I seeing, which parts of building, parts of trees, etc. But not uh, overdo it, and and uh, basically demand too much memory. From the computational point of view, there is almost no downside. And we met around Smith uh, without IVS, basically uh, with the same speed. But of course, the memory demand is a big difference. We talk about this in a second when we look into the software. So how does it look in, in the model? So this would be um, a cell in the center here and it would shoot rays in all the different directions. Yeah, And the user basically defines, okay, how many rays is this uh, cell shooting? And whenever uh, a cell hits something, it not only memorizes this, for example, this ray, we follow it and it hits the building here. It does not only memorize, okay, it is hitting this building, but this particular facade of the building and then it can ask this building okay how much long wave radiation or the, can I ask this facade how much long wave radiation are you emitting and to what extent does this contribute to the amount of radiation i'm seeing because i see of course and i, I shoot of course lots of different other cells so what is the view factor um the field of view that this facade is attributed to the radiation i'm receiving
So this is basically what the IVS is doing. It memorizes which parts of buildings, parts of vegetation, parts of soil surfaces am I seeing and then can say, okay, I can receive this amount of short wave reflected radiation and long wave radiation. So let's see what these differences make. And we have a simulation here. This is the southern part of Central Park. You see the Columbus Square here and you see buildings that have different um, materials. You see lots of different materials, not just for the for the facades, but also for the soil surfaces. You see trees, etc. And we want to compare a simulation without and with IVS regarding the secondary radiation. So a simulation without IVS would then just use the average view factor as before and the IVS um, would use the index view sphere and the approach that I just explained. So let's see two simulation results. This would be a simulation result for the lower hemisphere of the long wave radiation. And if we look to the left here, you see, okay, there seems to be some patterns, but these patterns, the spread between the values is very, very low. Yeah, So you see that there is maybe um, the darker orange would be maybe 506 watts and the lighter yellow would be maybe 495 watts or something like this. So there's basically more or less 10 watts between these surfaces that the average view factor is accounting to. And why? Well, obviously, because we're only averaging what a cell sees. So a cell above the this pathway here, it sees more, um, more uh, open soil then it sees vegetation yeah where there's grass here so uh, the view factor for soil is higher and times the average of all the long wave radiation emitted from surfaces will result then in a different value a slightly different value than above vegetation how does it compare with the indexed view sphere well in the index view sphere we see a much much low a larger range uh, between value values here so first of all you see that here in the shade of buildings, the surfaces that are the same material, they do not heat up as much and thus the same material. This is street, here's the same kind of pavement yeah, or asphalt. And you see there are huge differences in the long wave radiation received for these two different cells, for the cell that is in the shade and the cell that is not in the shade. And even within Central Park, you seem to see the same thing. You see that here is an um, asphalt road and these pathways, you can see them here again. Yeah, They are of different materials. They also emit lower values of long wave radiation to the cells above. The diversity that IVS brings when it can actually ask, okay, which cells am I seeing? Which, with which cells am I in a visual uh, connection? it gives us a much better information about the actual radiation received. Okay, so the next example would be the reflected short wave radiation for the upper hemisphere. So every the results here show you the upper hemisphere. So what is the cell receiving from, from the top and only the reflected short wave radiation. And in the model run, we have 1 p.m. and north is over here. So the south is coming from the left over, over, over here. Again, in the average view factor result, you see that there is not a big spread between the low and the high values. So it's basically um, 20 watts between high and low values. And what's also interesting is for all the cells that are close to buildings, close to or in between two buildings, you see higher values and even on the north facing uh, sides. Why is that the case? How can there be reflected short of radi radiation? Well, in the average view factor approach, we do not have the information are these surrounding facades sunlit and do they actually reflect onto m uh, my cell? It is again the average approach. How is it different in the IVS? Well, in the IVS, you see that this building, for example, it has a glass facade, it is reflecting. Uh, short wave radiation only on the sunlit sides. Yeah, so there we have quite high values of reflected short wave radiation, and this is again the same case here for this uh, building made out of glass. And for other buildings, the values are, are lower. The same, of course, goes for trees. Yeah, trees also have an albedo and um, different than zero. And so in front of the tree, you can also receive 
amounts of um, short ref refracted radiation. You don't see any kind of these patterns here in the Central Park for the AVF simulation. And in the last example, we're having a look at the reflected short ref radiation from the lower hemisphere. So the cells now give me an indication of how much short ref reflected radiation is coming from underneath. And again, you see a very homogeneous picture for the AVF simulation. Only uh, where there's vegetation underneath, you see their view factors do have some, do, do cause some differences, but again, very low range between them. And for the uh, indexed view sphere uh, result, you see that there's actually, again, the shades of the building are clearly visible. So parts that are uh, that have the identical surface underneath, they still show, okay, is this surface underneath sunlit or not? And it will give you uh, different results. And also different materials like these baseball courts here, comprised of um, sand, they reflect much more radiation and thus you receive much more radiation on the on these surfaces compared to, for example, the darker roads inside the Central Park. Okay, so I think the benefits of IVS are clearly visible. And now we want to head into the software and I want to show you how to set uh, IVS up so that you can use it in your simulation in version 5. Okay, so the settings uh, for the IVS are inside the NV guide. So the new NV guide basically holds all the different configurations for your simulation and one of those is of course the IVS. So first you select your project and then you will define a model area for this project and once this is loaded you head to the optional settings and in the radiation setting, the IVS is part of the radiation setting. It is managing the secondary radiation. You click on there and you will receive a new optional setting. And now the, the IVS is in this box here. And the IVS can be enabled and disabled using this button. Yeah. So basically you can say, okay, yes, I want to have IVS. And if you want to have it, you um, need to define the height segment angles and the azimuthal segment angles I talked about before. Yeah. So please keep in mind, it also says here that higher level of detail. So if you go towards medium high, ultra high, etc., will greatly increase the, the memory demand. So for a simulation of, let's say, medium sized um, simulation, of uh, 200 by 200 grids and upwards, I would suggest using a low setting maybe or a medium setting for the angles. And this already um, massively improves the accuracy of the secondary radiation simulations, but won't demand as much memory. So it would be maybe around eight gigabytes of um, memory demand. You can further decrease the memory demand um, while not interfering too much with the increased accuracy. And you can do that by using a height cap for the ray tracing and the IVS precision. So basically what this option asks is, do you want the IVS to have a high resolution or the resolution you set here for the whole model domain or only until a certain height above ground? And that makes a lot of sense, yeah? So most of the time you're interested in the effects of building changes or structural changes or climate change, etc., on pedestrian level, yeah? So you're interested for the maybe lowest five meters, yeah? From the, from the ground level. And so you don't need that much accuracy of secondary radiation in higher heights. And so you can introduce a height cap here. And this height cap not only goes for the IVS, only if it's enabled, of course, but also for the ray tracing precision. So this would be, okay, how fine is the resolution, resolution of the ray tracing? So how many steps is the ray tracing doing? This greatly increases your simulation time. Yeah, so the, it speeds up the simulation and it reduces memory demand. So I'd recommend using a height cap for the ray tracing and the IVS and you can set it up um, in meters where the height cap should be used. All right, so this would be the, the settings. I, of course, also have to add a meteorology, and I just use a simple forcing for that, and I save my SimX file. 
Okay, now that we saved our configuration, our Semex file, we can head to the NV Core and uh, start the simulation. Again, we select the project and we load the Simex file we just created. And once it's loaded, you see that the IVS method is on. Please keep in mind that IVS is only available if you have license of NVMet. So it's not available in the light version, but in all the other versions, IVS is, is available. So now it is on and I can run the simulation. 